Hi there guys, Gary here for GenVFX. Nice little quick one today. I want to talk very quickly about, um, uh, not geometry nodes, but I want to talk about shading. And in the node graph, there is something called geometry. Now, Gleb Alexandrov, I've talked about this at length, but I just wanted to, um, if anyone who hasn't seen Gleb Alexandrov's tutorial all about what you can do with um, different ways of setting up um, shading and adding detail and stuff onto hard surfaces. There's just this one little thing that I really, really love. And it's just, it was something that when I started using Blender, I didn't know, it wasn't there when I first started using it. Now it is, it's really, really good. And it's something that's used a lot in other software. There's an equivalent in Modo in particular, but let's let's just talk about it. So basically what I've got here is a, a very small wall and some grass. The grass isn't really that important. I could in fact turn that off. In fact, I think I might. Let's just go to our landscape and I'm just going to very quickly go to this and turn those off. Yeah, just to make life quicker in terms of the rendering. So let's go back here and let's add a new principal shader to our wall. And I'm also just going to just do a little bit of adjustment here. I'm going to make the color for one of a better thing. I'm just going to make the color a dark gray. I want it to be a hint of metallic, even though it's not. I want the specular okay and I want the roughness chucked up. I don't want to see um, anything much rather than just some dirty, dirty blocks, dirty blacks. But what we're going to do is going to add some more information to this. So I'm going to add an input and it's going to be geometry. Now this is when I say a geometry node, this is the one I mean. You can use anything that's on your geometry to drive your shading. Uh, that is available to you on here. So you've got position, so you can actually strip out the X, Y, or Z um, and say anything in the X can be red, anything in the Y is green, and anything in the Z is blue. So you can actually drive those colors and then mix them all together. You could do a color ramp into the normal, into the color ramp and throw things around, and so on and so on down here, all the way down to randomness per island. Yes, that's right, randomness per island. Now this is actually brilliant. And the reason I'm going to say uh, it is, it's just, it's just fantastic. I'm going to go down here to color ramp. I'm going to drop this color ramp in here. I'm going to go point into island into the factor. I'm going to drag the color and go bop and drop that directly into base color. And straight away, it gives you different colored bricks. Now that's something pretty darn cool, quite frankly. Um, why is that? I hear you cry. Well, that's because what it does is it takes every value between that one and that one and applies them randomly per island to your object. And by island, what I mean is if you've got an object which has got, it's one single object, but it's got 500 individual pieces to it, each of those individual pieces will have a different color. So right now that's obviously a series of grays. So I'm gonna pick this black one here. That's not getting a lot of attention in the wall, which is quite sad. Shift it and make it a little bit gray. And I'm gonna shift and put a little bit of hue in there and a little bit of saturation. Just an icky, icky, ickle, ickle bit. Just there, into the brownie bit. And let's push that up a little bit. And I'm going to go here, into here. And I'm going to bring this into this bit down here. And I'm going to bring this down a bit to that, like that. So that actually has just basically broken up our wall. One shader. One shader, and you've got all this, this different stuff going on. Well, that's good. That's lovely. I hear you cry, isn't it? Yes, I hear you cry. That's lovely. So I'm going to go here into the Musgrave texture. Why not? And add a little bit of bump to this. So let's take this, and we're going to add a, a boot, vector bump. I go, boot, had a moment. Boot. I'm going to put them into the height. I'm going to just try that way. There you go. I take the normal and drop it into the normal. And you're not seeing anything at all because... I plugged it into the clear coat normal, not the normal. There we go. So you can see that this is actually taking its step. If I press Control T, it'll give us the same thing, which is it's coming from generated IE. What that means, it's saying this is a 3D texture, and therefore I will treat it as such. So let me just scale this up a bit and scale that there, and reduce the dimension to give us a little bit more variety. There we go. It's not maybe not quite so much. There you go. But that's still traveling across the bricks in a very very organized manner. Well, here you see this wonderful random per island can also add a little bit of variety to our texture mapping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the generated normals here. I'm going to add a couple of nodes. I've done this before. Uh, I'm going to add in the converter, I've got some vector math. I'm going to drop that in there. So that's added literally nothing to it. If I push this along, you can see the updating 
as it shifts in the window. And into that, I'm going to connect here where we're there, randomness per island, that's it. And that is actually shifted it all around all over the place. But of course, that's a little bit not exactly what I want because I want to be able to add a reduced amount in. I want to have a bit more control over this. So I'm going to add into this another vector math into here. I'm going to change that to multiply. And you'll see that if I drop down the scale on this, so you can see where the repeats are a bit more. Let's drop down the detail a bit. So it's a little bit flatter. There we go. You can see that they're all pretty much following this lovely little path. If I push this a little bit through here, so I'm increasing the multiplication, you can see it's broken the path. It's broken that regular patterning, which is there. If I put that just to 0.5, that's, th that's enough. I mean, yeah, I, could easily, I could actually move it up, move it, move it up and down on the Z. So say minus 0.25 of the Z. That shifts it again. It's fine. I'm going to leave it like that, which is great. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to increase that detail a little bit. Increase the actual breaking detail a lot. And the dimension, I'm going to bring that down a little. And the strength, I'm going to put that to 0.25. So it's just a little bit of bumpage. A little bit of bumpage. And then again, I'm just going to do, well, maybe I should change. Some of these are slightly wetter than others. So let's just do the same thing again. And we're going to go add another color ramp by the converter and let's get this random per island into there random par what is it random random per island par island and i'm going to drop this color into the roughness okay I'm on. so now what we've got is there are some which are nice and shiny and some which are not shiny so i'll pop through you just go pump to the other side and you can see what's happening there so obviously the black is shiny and the white is not so let's say that black is too shiny so we'll bring that up so it's not quite so shiny and we'll bring this down a tiny bit so it's not totally off and there we have some really nice really nice stuff going on there that's starting to feel like a proper wall um i mean granted you could also so like maybe adjust the specular in fact let's just do that let's make a duplicate of this one so shift d and we'll pop that over here temporarily. Render per island into there. Color into the specular. And there you go. We've got the same thing again. And it also, because even though it says random per island, the information that comes out of that random per island is the same no matter which one it goes into. So if you've got a darker piece here, it's not going to be quite as shiny as the paler ones, which are more shiny and so on. So it's it's really quite useful. And then also you can do is use it for adjusting anything so you can actually use it to control the strength so you can have it so it's strong on some and less strong on others but i i think i've gotten the point across um let's set that to 20 there you go that's a nice little nice little thing there i like that that's good so if i go back to my blades of grass on my landscape and turn those back on and i go into my rendering let's just go file save as and stick it in here as geom node underscore end there we go like that save as and i'm going to render this out let's just press f12 so while that's rendering um i can just look on and go ooh, and smile and go ah and then maybe think about well it'd be nice with a bit of depth of field and maybe if i adjusted this and that i keep on adding more walls in and every time i add a wall in i just drop on the same single shader and i keep on getting the variation throughout oh how wonderful one shade one shader to rule them all. It is a bit like that. Something that you can do that. But I mean, you can, I mean, as I say, you can use this on anything. So you can have a series of gems on a necklace and you can make them all ever so slightly different shades of the same color. So you get a teeny tiny bit of variation. Just a teeny tiny bit, which would be fab. And again, you could also use it on, for example, um, panels on a spaceship. Sounds bonkers, but actually it just that panel, you putting that in there, you've got a load of objects with the same shader on. They don't even have to be in the same object. They could all be individual objects. Uh, but if they've all got the same shader on and everything wants a teeny tiny shift in the gray or a teeny tiny shift in the sharpness, you know, that in the in the in the in the in that roughness, just to make it all just go, ooh, that 
is that's the stuff. That's the stuff that makes your life so much easier. Just keep sticking in objects, keep slapping on the same shade, and you keep getting variation. I mean, you can't say fairer than that. That's 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 enough there to make a man happy. I think. Maybe I've just had a sad life. <laughs> what am I talking about? What am I talking about? Listen, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. I will see you this time next week and have a, a wonderful, wonderful life as we slowly move away from lockdown mania back into a level of normality that is now freaking some of us out a little bit. I don't like this. All these people, where did they come from? Turn them away. I think someone went to bed. Night, guys. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and I will see you soon. Take care.